Okay, first step in this process is gonna be just taking the rear plastics off and the rear rack off so that I can get in and get access to everything else. Uh, I'm gonna leave the tires and everything on while I do this. So what I've got is, is I've got a 3 8 drive ratchet with a 12 millimeter socket. And we are gonna go underneath here first and I'm gonna disconnect the braces that go to the rack. And then I'm gonna go around and start taking off all these, which are 10 millimeter. And uh, we're gonna get this fender off. Then we'll go to the other side. This one is kind of hidden near the brace. Okay, this is back by the bumper. And the fender is kind of pinched as a, it goes in between this bumper bracket and the uh, the frame of the of the ATC at the rear part of the fender You can see that this there's a hole and part of the frame has a Round piece on it that the fender comes over. So what I did take a little pry bar in there and You can get the clearance to then pull See how I'm creating clearance you can get in there and move enough clearance that you can get the fender off without removing the rack. Now that this is moved away a little bit, I'm gonna take this last bolt out that supports the fender. And what I can do is then, I feel like this gives me more room to work. Whereas if you try to take just the rack off and everything first, it's, I think this is an easier way you can try to do what you want to do to get it stripped down. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this one off, then I can pull the whole fender out of there. I'm going to do the other side. I'm not going to show the other side because we just did it on this side. And then we'll be down to just the whole rack assembly and all that. So let's do it. The other fender's off. And now, like I said, you could take the rack off first. You could do it either way. I like to do it this way. Uh, you can see now that the bumper is just loose because we took the uh, the bolt out here, the mounting bolt, and then we popped these off uh, so the fender could come out. And now this rack is kind of just loose. These have loosened up. This was in a big crash. I crashed this around 2012 or 13 and really got hurt bad. And the, and the ATC got hurt bad too. You can see that a lot of the of this is bent. I don't know if we're gonna try to straighten this and fix it or if I'm gonna buy another one off eBay. You can see the mount on this side is real bad bent. But uh, so what I'm gonna do is take this bolt out and then I'm gonna take this bolt out. Then the rack will be off and we'll really have good access in here to see what's going on. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and do the next step here. And here we go, the rack is off. And the little storage compartment will pull right out. I already disconnected the brake light. So here we go, my plan moving forward is to leave this as a rolling chassis as long as I possibly can. That way while I'm working on it in here after I'm done work for the day in my shop and whatnot, is I can move it around, I can get at it, all that. So what we're gonna do is, I'm going to remove the chain and leave the whole rear axle in there. We're gonna remove the chain tonight and then I'm gonna continue part one of this series in taking the engine out. So first we're gonna remove the engine tonight. We're gonna to take the carburetor off. Um, we're gonna remove the air box, all that stuff's gonna come out and then we're gonna pull the motor and I'm gonna take the engine and the sub transmission and all that and put it up here, clean off my welding bench 
and we'll set it up there where I'm gonna do a lot of the uh, inspection work on the engine. So let's go ahead and start tearing more off. Let's take the top air box cover off. Pull the old air filter out. Take the rear mounting bolts off. And you might find it easier on this side to use a quarter inch drive if the exhaust is still on. I took a little wire brush and cleaned that off. <clears throat> Obviously it's pretty dirty. Let's loosen up this clamp for the boot. Okay, now reaching on the left hand side, I can disconnect the boot from the air box. And now I can loosen the boot at the carburetor up in here. You can watch my other videos on how to install the carburetor. And you know, it's just the, the opposite of doing it this way. And I'm gonna be getting at these two at the carburetor end. Take those off. Broke it loose. And now I'm back on the other side by the boot. And look up under here. It's hard to see, but it's right up in there. I'm gonna put the 10 millimeter socket on and break that one loose. Now I can put the phone down and get it by hand. Okay, should be able to maneuver this out of here now. Okay, air box is out. Now, while we're here, I just wanna mention something that's kinda of cool if you've never thought about it, but where does the fresh air come from that goes to the air box? Now, I pulled the rubber boot off of there. Remember, we just disconnected that from the side of the air box. So, the tube there goes up through as part of the frame, or it connects right in here, look. Comes up here, all the way up under here. And if you look in there, it's gonna be hard to see it on the camera here, but you see that hole? That allows fresh air to be drawn from up high on the ATC. You can get this thing up significantly in the water and still run them. I've done it many times. You can see videos online of these ATCs with water right up onto the seat practically, and it's still not dying out. Unless you get up to the key switch area where you're gonna start getting water up into here by the top of the uh, triple tree, you're fine. And uh, that's one of the things I like about these ATCs. It, it's kind of really, if you look at it, it's a pretty cool snorkel. So we now have fenders off, racks off, uh, luggage, box or whatever you want to call that utility box is off air box is off we are at the point now where we're going to pull the um, carburetor off that's the next thing i want to do i'm going to disconnect the spark plug and uh, the spark plug wire and uh, then we're going to have to deal and this is going to be i've been spraying this for several days now with pb blast and uh, the exhaust this exhaust is shot, it's rusted out on the inside here. Obviously the tailpipe part is gone. It's had some real booger job, JV weld smeared on there for patches. I'm probably just gonna have to replace it. If I can't get it to come off here, I don't care if I break the studs. If I mean, I don't want to obviously, maybe I'll try to split the nut. But if we, if we break the studs off, we'll just fix it in the bridge port. But, uh, yeah, so let's keep going for episode one of this rebuild process and get us to the point where we can pull the engine out of this thing. Next step I wanna do here is to take off all the electrical items. And uh, we're gonna pull it all off the harness. And we're gonna leave it up in this side of the ATC while we get the engine out of here.
Now we're gonna disconnect the terminal from the starter. Okay, let's get the choke cable out of here. I'm just gonna remove the, the whole bracket on the side of the carburetor. I've got videos about uh, cleaning these carburetors and taking them off and installing them on my YouTube channel. Let me check that out. Nope. And that spring goes on a certain way. We'll have to remember that when we put it back together. Luckily, I can watch my own videos if I have to. So now we'll take the throttle off the top of the carburetor. Let's get that right out of the way. Hooking everything to the front. Remember, we're gonna start with the rear section. We're gonna pull the engine out. We're gonna do some work to that. Then we're gonna do the rear axle, hook up the rear brakes, all that. Put the plastics back on, and then we're gonna do the front. So that's the order of operations. So let's get the carburetor off now completely, which should be pretty easy because we've got all kinds of room now without the air box and everything. And the other one. Okay, so the carburetor, oh, carburetor is now off. I've rolled the ATC until I found the master link, which you can see right here. This clip holds the master link together, and uh, we're going to pop that off, and then we'll be able to get the chain off. Now, this has not been off in many, many years, so I might have to fight it a little bit, but we're going to get that off and we'll have the chain off. So I've had to kind of tap it with a chisel and I'm gonna just break it. I'm putting a new chain on this anyways. But it's all stuck on there, corroded. Definitely be a hard time getting it to pop right off. Okay, so what I've done is I just took a chisel and just tapped it a little bit. It's on there pretty corroded and stuff. I'm, I'm not gonna reuse this. I'm gonna put a new chain on, but we got the clip off. Okay, now. It is time to start taking the exhaust off. And I am very impressed with PB Blast. I've always been a fan of the PB Blaster. And uh, I soaked this, I soaked the nuts on this for three or four days just spraying it every morning when I came out to my shop and I just broke it free with a uh, ratchet and now I'm just using these ratcheting wrenches but they're coming right off and I really thought I was gonna have to uh, end up splitting the nut or something now it is pulling the stud out which is not a big deal as long as the stud doesn't break it'll go right back in there and when it's off I'll be able to free the nut up off the stud Okay, let's come over to these, these supports, and I hope these ones come off as easy as the uh, manifold studs did. Okay, I noticed, remember where I said this had a really crappy patch job? Well, yeah, anyways, I started wiggling this when I came over to look at these, and I found out I'm probably going to be able to just pull this right out. Yeah, look at that. Okay, this, well, the good news is, is uh, this part might be salvageable. Let me set this aside. And you can see here how this was all just gone. Hopefully, I can find a muffler on eBay that's still good and uh, maybe even use the front pipe. We might be able to get this thing 
patched together without a whole lot of money because I know these go for a lot of money on eBay. Kind of ridiculous, really. And we get a 12 millimeter socket. Okay, that support is off. Now there's one up under here. There's another support there. It's very dirty. Might be hard to get my socket to engage on it without knocking some of the crud out. So with the top one off, there is another one underneath here. I'm gonna reach under there, remove this one. And then we should have the muffler right off. Okay, muffler's coming out. And this muffler is, I believe, pretty much beyond repair, it's all I don't know, we'll see for availability what we're gonna be able to do, I'm not sure yet. We are now getting to the final stage of pulling this engine and sub transmission out of the frame. So we've gone through a lot in this video. I'm gonna end this video as soon as the engine is out. Then we're gonna start part two of the series of removing the head. We're gonna take the cylinder off. I'm gonna bore this and hone it. Um, we're gonna split this up here and we're gonna pull the crank out and all that stuff. You will not wanna miss that part of the series. I may be putting a mild performance cam into this when it goes back together, haven't decided yet. But, so to get the engine out, we are gonna start with this front mount. And you saw I just had the ratchet on there. Up like under here, we're gonna take those out take this bar in the back out, unhook this, and um, then we're gonna see what else we got holding us in here. There's some on the bottom. We'll go around to all of them. We'll make sure you see where they are. So we got the 13 millimeter socket on. We're gonna start with these ones. I misspoke a second ago. It's a 12 millimeter socket I had on there. This upper one, you might be better off using a wrench, try to break it free. All right, it's coming good now. So I'm gonna switch over to a ratcheting one and I just barely can fit this in there. Depending on what ratcheting uh, wrench you have, you might not be able to fit it up in there good. Okay, so now what it's doing is it's just spinning because the whole bolt is spinning. So I'm gonna have to hold it from the other side and then remove it. With that one out, I pulled that one completely out. The bolt is on the floor here. This one, I'm gonna leave it kind of sitting there for now. Once we loosen everything, then I'll come back with a punch and I'm just gonna drive that out. I'm just leaving that there so it has some kind of, a little bit of stability. I'm not pulling all the bolts out as I loosen them. I'm gonna loosen them all, then go back, knock them out, and then get the engine out. So here we are here at the rear mount and I've got a 14 millimeter socket and we're gonna get this out of here. Behind the shifter here, look in, you got a bolt that runs through there. Again, 14 millimeter, we're gonna take this one off. Now that I've got that back one off, I've come here, removed this last bolt, and I'm gonna now take the support plate off so that we're gonna be able to swing this this way. You got two bolts here, 14 millimeter. All right, so I've gone back and I punched all the bolts out and we're just down to this one up here. That one support is all we've got left. So 
Let's get that out of here. And you can see the engine just started to drop, okay? Let me put something on the back side here, remove this last bolt, and then I'll have my son come out. We're gonna lift this right out. All right, the engine's coming out. Here we go. Now the real fun begins. <laughs> 